So why is Ben calling it off with JLo? We've got all the possible reasons why this couple is on the outs. So if you didn't know, it's been kind of big in the news, Jennifer recently launched her album and a lot of other things. This is me now. This was like a self-financed $20 million multimedia campaign. And then she also launched the big film, This Is Me Now, A Love Story. You sense this? Yeah, it's about the rekindling of the romance with Ben. No pressure. And then you've also got the documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told. Well, until it was told. What was it about? The making of the record and the film. There was also supposed to be a tour, but ooh. So when Ben popped up in the documentary, it was to express concern because he didn't want his private love story being used for something he didn't want. Turns out the documentary was named after a scrapbook that he gifted Jennifer for Christmas in 2021, and it had every letter and email they'd written to each other over the last 20 years. I can see why he wanted that private. Jennifer was like, oh no. She showed the book to her producers and songwriters on the first day of making this album, without asking or telling Ben. She's like, it was our bible, we just left it in the studio. This precious thing filled with 20 years of memories that somebody else wanted private. Yeah, this is all mentioned within the first five minutes of the documentary, and right out of the gate, Ben is not shy about his discomfort. He is shocked that Jennifer would share something so personal with her collaborators, and now with the world. Yes, art does come from making something personal, but when you're making somebody else intentionally uncomfortable with your art, and kind of violating consent, it's not a good move. So JLo did recently announce that she was cancelling the tour attached to this whole media run, and that's yet another red flag pointing to a divorce. So while rumors about this relationship have continued to circulate on social media, a source close to JLo set the record straight about one item making news, the couple quietly selling their $61 million Beverly Hills mansion. This property has like 12 bedrooms, 24 washrooms, a 12 car garage, sports complex, I could go on and on and on. Thank you Wall Street Journal for all that information. So this place, which the couple moved into about a year ago now, apparently just isn't the right long term fit for either of them. This is once again from that source. Apparently Ben never liked the house. It's too far away from his kids. Whereas JLo was like, oh it's too big for her. It's too big for the diva. Okie dokie, once again, red flag. So even before the news about selling their home, everybody knew Ben and her weren't exactly living together anymore. And that little tidbit of news was confirmed by so many sources and so many outlets. For starters, TMZ reported on May 16 that Ben was staying at a Brentwood home all by himself. I get wanting space to focus when you're on a job, and he is currently working on a movie, but the timing? A little sketch. Now that was confirmed by US Weekly later that same day. Then on May 19, an Entertainment Tonight source claimed they've been staying in separate homes and the tension has been high. The mother of two was seen house hunting in Beverly Hills without Ben, instead with some gal pals. And if you've been through a breakup, you know you need your friends for support. Because uh, I apparently he's just focusing on his work and his kids. So so he's moved out and they're gonna have to sell that home. Yeah, well, it's up for sale. Look, it's only been a year. Like, I get I've already said this, but it's just, ah. Talk about a house flip. So fans were very quick to point out, the pair have been spending a lot of time apart lately. They've been attending a lot of events without each other, other than stuff for the kids, which I get wanting to stay together for the kids. For starters, JLo was seen in a casual sporty look when she was showing up for rehearsal in LA. And I get it, he might not have accompanied her to rehearsal, but it was like, mm. Little weird. Okay, here's one thing. She was solo for her co chairing duties at the Met Gala, the big fashion event of the year. Everybody was shocked that Ben wasn't there. Now, yes, he was busy with work, but like, he appeared at the Rose of Tom Brady May 5th, the night before, which kind of cancels out the too busy for the Met Gala excuse that he was playing with. During one recent outing together, when the pair was out together, it was kind of strained. Neither of them were cracking a smile when they were grabbing lunch. They've also appeared tense during previous outings. Let's see, they went to St. Bart's. That was a heated discussion. Cameras caught them, they were fighting. Just months before that in September, which is last year folks, we're going pretty close here, Jennifer was seen looking very tense as she sat in the passenger seat of a car alongside Ben as they drove around LA. And they also raised eyebrows when they were seen attending the premiere of The Mother together. Now this was JLo's movie. So they were posing on the red carpet, you know, where everybody's going like, okay, picture, picture, smile, smile. Well, Jennifer had a frown on her face and she was gesturing towards Ben and he looked angry. Yes, there was a lip reader that did clarify that that it wasn't an argument, but it looked like one. So after they were snapped having their very tense conversation, they soon reverted to Hollywood mode. They had the big grins, they had the little kisses. It was just like, mm. So what did the lip reader confirm? Well, JLo asked Ben if her low cut top was showing too much. And he's like, no, it looks fine, honey, which ooh, doesn't sound cute. Now later when they got their posing and they were all cutesy, he was like, oh, don't worry, babe. And it's like, uh, okay, what are we worrying about? Now Jennifer seemingly responded by saying, Come 
close to me. Which like, if you've gotta guide yourselves together, not good. So JLo actually has a habit of being a bit of a diva, like a big one. Whereas Ben is not exactly a diva himself, which might be a cause for a split. You wanna know how big of a diva JLo's been? Once, she had somebody fired for being a fan. Now this was a maid in a hotel room. She was just cleaning, this was in Germany during JLo's 2012 world tour, and she was a big fan. Her name was Prey, by the way, and she tried to ask JLo for an autograph, and then two of JLo's assistants stopped her. Soon after, Prey was out of a job. Yeah, the cleaning company that employed her called her and said, Miss Lopez complained, and she was fired over the phone because of asking for an autograph. Now, JLo denied the claims with a tweet, being like, come on, thought you knew me better than this. Why never get anyone fired over an autograph? First I heard of this was on Twitter. Well, if that isn't enough to prove JLo's behavior, we've got more. There was an old interview from like ages ago, and she wasn't speaking too well about all of her colleagues in the industry. Now, for context, JLo is a multi-hyphenate. She's a dancer, she's a singer, she's an actress. Well, way back in the day, she had this to say about Gwyneth Paltrow. She was like, tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. JLo even had stuff to say about Madonna, being like, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do, so I'm hard to run people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. I'm like, honey, don't spit on my craft. Well, when JLo said this, she'd only done Selena and Anaconda in terms of acting roles, which like, not something to be bragging about. Personally, don't think she's a strong actress. According to a lot of JLo's former staff members, she's earned the nickname Halo because she paid her staff about 50% less than they could find elsewhere. And this has been going on for years. Um, if we're talking like 2003, back around the first time JLo was with Ben. So they had a big win and Ben was like, okay, here's a $2,000 tip to the dealer. But before the dealer could actually grab the reward, JLo snatched it up and dropped $200. And what's her reasoning for paying everybody so little? She's like, well, I had to work hard for my money, so should everybody else. Like, it's just so embarrassing. Like, if she had to work hard, shouldn't she try to make it easier for others since she knows how hard it is? Cause like, it just gets worse over the years. One more story on this. In 2012, reports surfaced that JLo demanded that staff working for her, don't make any eye contact with me. Don't speak to me. This was while she was having work done on her San Fernando Valley home. And she demanded that none of the helpers, none of the drivers, the contractors, anybody, nobody interact with her. And also when she's flying first class, don't bother her. Even if you're a flight attendant just trying to do your job. Apparently there was one time where a flight attendant offered her a drink and she just like did not acknowledge him. She said to her assistant, please tell him I'd like a Diet Coke and Lime. Which like, so rude. So her relationships have always been in the spotlight. She's been in like, I don't know, several high profile relationships that have made headlines. From 2004 to 2011, she was married to Mark Anthony. They had those twins. And then in 2017, she was with uh, former New York Yankee, Alex Rodriguez. Now here's where the diva control issues come into play. Apparently she would only consider consider marrying A-Rod if he agreed to a list of demands. So he couldn't talk to anybody under the age of 40, sorry, any woman under the age of 40, which gross. And also she wanted a guarantee that he won't let himself go once they get married. So we know that marriage didn't work out because she's now, well, maybe married to Ben, but what rules did he have to agree to to keep her happy? So Ben was actually recently spotted out on an outing with former wife, Jennifer Garner. They were seen earlier this week talking together. Jennifer Garner appeared relaxed and casual. So like, is he still pining for his ex? Or is he looking for advice on how to break things off with JLo? So with Ben and JLo constantly working on their own separate projects, time and distance can be making the heart grow colder instead of fonder. According to insiders, JLo was reportedly throwing herself into work, which has always been an outlet for her to stay busy and distracted. So yeah, she has been busy with a lot of press tours for Atlas and The Greatest Love Story. So it seems like she's coping with marital issues by focusing on her career. Ben feels like she has a hard time feeling satisfied. And that's one of the many issues they're facing. He's also one of the only people who feels comfortable enough to be honest and real with her. It's part of why she loves them, but also why she's upset with them. And finally for today, it seems like the duo are just regretting how rushed the marriage was. A lot of insiders have been non-stop dishing about what's been going on, and uh, one source from page six is a lot. So this was somebody connected to Ben, and they noted that if there was a way to divorce on grounds of temporary insanity, apparently he would. He feels like the last two years were a fever dream, and he's just come to his senses now and understands there is just no way this is going to work. Yikes. Are Benefer on the rocks again? Looking over the recent news that's come out about the couple, I feel like Ben might be getting cold feet. But don't just take my word for it. Take the mountain of evidence I found. So for starters, JLo is pressuring him to do things. Now sure, to a lot of folks it might be clear that JLo and Ben Affleck are blended family goals with their ex-spouses. They ensure their five children feel close and safe with everyone in their large family, and it seems like they're kind of antsy about welcoming another member into the family. Yeah, reportedly, they want another child together. Now while JLo has repeated the sentiment for quite some time, Soon after she and Ben got back together, 
Insiders claimed that uh, she's got baby fever and she's talking about it non-stop. A source recently told Life and Style via Yahoo that she's been trying to convince Ben to welcome another baby via surrogacy. And recently, she finally got him to cave in. Apparently, according to our source, she nagged him until he went along with it. Ben was completely happy with the blended family they already have, but he loves kids. That's why he agreed to having another. At the end of the day, he wants Jennifer to be happy. Ooh, that doesn't sound like a healthy situation. A baby isn't just an accessory. It's a commitment and definitely not something you should be nagged into doing. Also, he wants a more low-key life. Like, all in all, Ben Affleck tends to be a more low-key person compared to JLo, minus them both working in the public eye. So JLo recently launched her new album, This Is Me, Now, with a self-financed $20 million multimedia campaign. Then she made the experimental film, This Is Me Now, A Love Story. We get it. This was about the rekindling of her romance with Ben. And then there was the Amazon Prime documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, about, yep, the making of the record in the film. So when Ben pops up in the documentary, it's often to express concern that his private love story is becoming used for something he didn't particularly want. So this entire thing is actually named after a scrapbook that he gifted Jennifer for Christmas in 2021, stacked with every letter and email they'd written to each other over the last 20 years, which is something that should probably be private. Jennifer showed the book to her producers and songwriters on the first day of making her new album without asking or telling Ben. She's like, it kind of became like our Bible. We just left it there in the studio. Which, this revelation comes out within the first five minutes of the documentary. And right out of the gate, Ben isn't shy about his discomfort. He's absolutely shocked that Jennifer would share something so personal with her collaborators. And now, of course, with the world. I get it. Art comes from making something personal. But when you're making someone intentionally uncomfortable with your art and kind of violating consent, that's not a good move. Now, yes, if you look back at the history, JLo's relationships have always been in the spotlight. She's been in more than several high profile relationships that have made headlines all over the world. So Ben should know what he was getting back into. For example, from 2004 to 2011, she was married to Mark Anthony. They had twins. And then in 2017, she made headlines again when she was dating former New York Yankee Alex Rodriguez. Now rumors spread that she was only going to consider marrying him if he agreed to the like crazy list of demands. Reportedly, he wasn't allowed to talk to any woman under the age of 40, which is super controlling. Gross. Also, JLo loved his physique and wanted to get guarantee that he wouldn't let himself go once they got married. Now, sure, none of these rumors have been confirmed, but like, it's just a little extreme. Now, yes, we know Jen and A-Rod didn't work out because she's now married to Ben, but I'm wondering, what did he have to agree to to make her happy? We already know she nagged him into possible surrogacy. What else? J-Lo at the end of the day has a reputation of being a bit of a diva. Okay, a big diva. Whereas I don't think I've ever heard about Ben making crazy demands for press tours or similar situations. Like once upon a time, J-Lo had somebody fired for being a fan. So there was this maid who happened to be cleaning her room in Germany during her 2012 world tour. And as a big fan of J-Lo, she tried to ask the star for an autograph only to have not one, but two of J-Lo's assistants stop her. And soon after she was out of a job and she knew why. Literally a day later, the cleaning company that employed her at the hotel called and said that J-Lo complained and she was fired over the phone because of asking for an autograph. Now, look, I get it. It's not the most professional thing in the world, but don't get somebody fired over it. Now, on the flip side, J-Lo herself denied the claims with one single tweet saying, come on, thought you knew me better than this. Would never get anyone fired over an autograph. First I heard about this was on Twitter. Okay, sure. There's plenty of speculation there, but mm, let's try something else. An old interview from JLo herself resurfaced recently and she wasn't speaking too well about her fellow colleagues in the industry. So this is what she had to say about two major stars at the time. Gwyneth Paltrow, she was like, tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. She also had stuff to say about Madonna. Do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. And I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. The funny thing is that this is what Jennifer said after only having like Selena and Anaconda under her belt for her career. So that's kind of embarrassing. And I'm glad people are calling her out for this behavior. Now, if we want to talk more about like close circle stuff, according to several of JLo's former staff members, she earned herself the nickname Palo because she paid her staff around 50% less than they can make elsewhere. Now, this rumor has been going on for years. Let's go way back to like 2003. So yes, you guessed it. Back when she was first with Ben Affleck, they were spotted in Vegas together. They had a big win and Ben decided to drop a 2000 tip to the dealer. But before he could, you know, tip the generous reward, JLo snatched up the cash and swapped it for 200. So 
Does JLo have a reason for paying her staff so little? She's like, I had to work hard to earn my money. So should everybody else. Yeah, that's embarrassing for her. If she had to work hard to earn her money, shouldn't she try to make it easier for others since she knows how hard it is? She just seems so entitled and that's just gross. Don't worry, we got more. Um, let's go back one year from that. 2002, she's starring in the romantic comedy Made in Manhattan. She's traveling all over the world promoting this romantic comedy. It's amazing, it's great, it's wonderful. And when she landed in London, she had people talking nonstop about her demands. But promoting the movie, she had a very interesting encounter with hotel staff. So she stayed at the Metropolitan Hotel and uh, that's where we started seeing the signs of her being a major diva. The hotel staff was kind of astounded by her lavish and extravagant demands because it reached new levels for them. Apparently she requested that the hotel staff had to provide her with thousands of pounds of lemon scented candles. Also like she needed limousines to escort her only like 200 yards away because couldn't do anything, had to travel in style, can't walk on the sidewalk. Let's go back more to, well, Sort of present day. In 2012, reports surfaced that uh, Jenny from the Block demanded staff working for her. Don't make eye contact with me. Don't talk to me. While having work done on her San Fernando Valley home, she demanded that none of the helpers, drivers, or contractors have any interactions with her. Yes, I know, these rumors were never confirmed, but still. And reportedly, when flying first class, yeah, don't bother her. Not even if you're a flight attendant. One time, a flight attendant offered her a drink, because that's her job, and she refused to acknowledge him. She said to her assistant, please tell him I'd like a Diet Coke and lime. Once again, I know, these rumors have not been confirmed, but like, when the evidence is piling up, you really gotta think about it. Seems like she doesn't appreciate the help she gets. So, on again, off again relationships have a bit of a bad track record. Yes, I know, the Benefer reunion was the big headline of 2021, and now, yes, they are a happily settled married couple. It only took them 20 years and two engagements to get there. For talking history speaking, their first round began in 2002. That's when they started in rom-com together. It was cute. Ben proposed, but then they broke things off in 2004. Since then, they went on, they married other people, they had kids, they got divorced, and then they dated other people again. And then, what do you know, a month after she ended things with A-Rod, welcome back. I think this is May of 2021. They got married in summer 2022. And while this is cute and all, once again, on again and off again relationships have a bad track record. What What's to stop this couple from calling it off again? Especially when you look at everything else we've talked about today. And finally, look, I know, I've already mentioned the documentary today, the This Is Me Now, the love story, but um, some fans who watched it afterwards had to take to social media to call out Jen for her lies. Yeah. Now we're not saying the love story is fake. That's true. But in one scene, JLo poses in the mirror of her personal gym as she shakes out her hair and reminisces about her childhood in the Bronx. She said, I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block, crazy little girl who used to be effing wild and no limits, all dreams. However, TikTok user Photos by Angela slammed the star in a series of videos as she claimed to have gone to the same Catholic high school as JLo and accused her of lying about her experience living in the Bronx. She said, we both attended an all girls high school in an Irish and Italian neighborhood. So you weren't right running up and down the block. And this isn't the only lie. JLo has long been accused of not actually singing on her albums, and singer Natasha Ramos actually took to TikTok to shed light on the rumor. Now Natasha, who has a voice very similar to JLo's, was hired to sing the demo of Jenny from the Block. And the production team liked her voice so much that they asked her to record five more songs for the album. This is me, this is me then, yeah. What do you know? Natasha received $3,500 and a backup singer's credit. But as she claimed, and as the original demo demonstrates, it is her voice that appears in the final track. And not only in the choruses, it's also her laugh and her yelling from the Bronx. Lopez only sings in the verse. So when you add up all these lies, I can see why Ben might be having some second thoughts. Is Ben on the rocks once again? And why is it JLo's fault? Let's discuss. So all in all, Ben Affleck tends to be a more low-key person compared to JLo, minus them both working in the public eye, obviously. So Jennifer recently launched a new album, This Is Me Now, with a self-financed $20 million multimedia campaign. Then you've also got the experimental film, This Is Me Now, A Love Story all about the rekindling of her romance with Ben. And then there was the Prime documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, which is about the making of the record and the film. If this is sounding repetitive and excessive, it is. So when Ben pops up in the documentary, it's to express concern that his private love story is becoming used for something he didn't particularly want. So this whole media spectacle is actually named after a scrapbook that Ben gifted Jennifer for Christmas, like, ages ago stacked with every letter and email they'd written to each other over the last 20 years. Now Jennifer showed the book to her producers and songwriters on the first day of making this new album, but she did it without asking or telling Ben. She's like, oh, it was just like our Bible. We left it in the studio. Now this revelation comes within the first five minutes of the doc. And right out of the gate, Ben is not shy about his discomfort. He is absolutely shocked that Jennifer would share something so personal with her collaborators. And now of course, with the whole wide world, it's quite clear that JLo and Ben are like kind of blinded fam 
So one thing that's cute is that JLo and Ben are kind of blended family goals. They've got their ex-spouses that are happy, and it also seems like they're kind of antsy about welcoming another member to the family. Yeah, apparently they want a kid together. Now, well, JLo has repeated the sentiment for quite some time. Soon after she and Ben got together, eh, well, sure. Some insiders claim that she's got baby fever. She's talking about it nonstop. But then also, she's just trying to convince Ben to welcome this baby via surrogacy. And recently, apparently, she got him to cave in. Somebody was like, yeah, she nagged him until he went along with it. Which, I, not a good move. A baby isn't an accessory. It's a commitment and not something you should be nagged into doing. And it's not going to save your marriage. During their last outing together, the pair appeared super strained, with neither of them cracking a smile as they grabbed lunch together. They've appeared tense during a lot of their previous outings, including when they were embroiled in quite a heated discussion during their St. Bart's getaway. Just months earlier than this, back in September, Jen was seen looking very, very tense as she sat in the passenger seat of a car near Ben as they drove around LA. I'm all for a pap walk, but like, ugh, look happy, guys. They also raised eyebrows when they were seen attending the premiere of The Mother. In a very awkward moment while posing on the red carpet, Jen had a big frown on her face, and she was like gesturing to Ben, and he looked angry. Yes, a lip reader did clarify that it wasn't an argument, but like, super awkward. After this, they soon reverted to like Hollywood mode. They had like these big grins, big kisses, but like, it's giving cover up. So. When you look at JLo, most of her relationships, if not all of them, have always been in the spotlight. She's been in all these high profile relationships and they've made headlines all over the world. So let's pick one, 2017, when she was dating former New York Yankee, Alex Rodriguez. Now rumors spread that she would only consider marrying him if he agreed to a list of demands. What were these? Well, you can't talk to any woman under 40, which, why, ew. Also, JLo loved his physique and wanted to guarantee that he won't let himself go once they get married. Now, we know those two didn't work out. She's with Ben, but like, what rules did Ben have to agree to to get back to this relationship? Because if she had that much control over her previous relationships, I don't think she's giving it up anytime soon. And that's not it. So lately, multiple reports claim Ben and Jen are living apart, which has been confirmed by multiple sources and in multiple outlets. First off, TMZ, May 16th, they're like, hmm, Ben's been staying at a Brentwood home all by himself. And then JLo was seen house hunting in Beverly Hills without Ben and set with some gal pals, which feels very obvious and spiteful. Now, one insider said he's focusing on his work and his kids, but he's already moved out. They'll likely have to sell the dream house they spent two years searching for. Now, it's only been a year since these guys bought this $60 million mansion. Like, it's called an estate. So that's how big this place is. So if JLo is just house hunting on her own, red flag? So just recently, JLo was asked point blank about the truth behind the divorce rumors. This was during a press conference for Atlas, her new Netflix movie. And after briefly laughing it off, she leaned in and was like, you know better than that. Completely dodging the question, but it's like, we wanna know. Her co-star, Simu Liu, also scolded the question, saying into the mic, come on, don't come in here with that. Which prompted not one, but like a couple of double looks from folks online who think there might be more to that duo. Lopez was also solo for her co-chairing duties at the Met Gala, with a lot of folks surprised that like Ben would skip such a huge event. Co-hosting the Met Gala is a huge deal. Ben is said to have been working, you know, he's too busy. But then he was on his own while appearing at the roast of Tom Brady, which was also May 5th, the night before the Met Gala. So like, you're too busy, but you're doing other social things? Mmm, what did Jen tell him to do? A March 19th post about red flags from relationship coach Elena Marsak went viral after it was revealed that JLo had pressed like. The post in question read, you cannot build a healthy relationship with somebody who lacks integrity and emotional safety, doesn't respect your time, doesn't think it's important to call or text back in a respectable time frame, lacks effective communication skills, and what was the other thing? Oh right, doesn't know who they are or what they want. Which seems like she's kind of subtweeting that. The caption added, you can't build a relationship with someone who is disconnected from themselves. We can't expect someone to see us when we can't even see them. Getting in a relationship is the easy part. Nurturing and fostering it is a different story. After all, love is not a feeling, it's an action. Which, is trying to tell us something? Now, if you didn't know, because I've already mentioned it a lot today, that whole documentary on Prime, giving the behind the scenes look into the new album and the movie. So some of the fans who watched it were like, hmm, Jen, we're gonna fact check you. You lied a little bit. In one scene, she poses in front of the mirror of her personal gym. She's shaking out her hair and she's like, oh, like, I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block, crazy little girl who used to be effing wild and no limits, all dreams. 
Yeah, cute in theory. However, TikTok user Photos by Angela slammed the star in a series of videos because she claimed to have gone to the same Catholic high school as Jennifer and accused her of lying about her experience living in the Bronx. She was like, we both attended an all girls high school in an Irish and Italian neighborhood. So you weren't running up and down the block. And this isn't the only lie she's been exposed for lately. She's long been accused of not actually singing on her albums. And singer Natasha Ramos took to TikTok to shed light on that. Now Natasha, who has a voice very similar to Jennifer's, was hired to sing the demo of Jenny from the Block. The production team liked her voice so much that they asked her to record five more songs for the album. Now Natasha did receive $3,500 and a backup singer's credit. However, as she claims, and as the original demo demonstrates, it's really only her voice in the final track. And not only in the choruses, it's her laugh and her yelling from the Bronx. JLo only sings in the verse. So, how is this relevant? Well, if these are just the lies that JLo tells the general public, what lies does she tell her husband? That's gonna cause badness in a marriage. Also, JLo has a habit of being quite a diva. When have you heard Ben making crazy demands for press tours or similar situations? An old interview from JLo recently resurfaced, and she's got a lot to say and none of it's good. Would you like an example? Well, here's what she had to say about two major stars at the time, starting with Gwyneth Paltrow. Tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Okay, what about what she had to say about Madonna? Do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that, I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Now, the funny thing about this is JLo said this after only having Selena and Anaconda under her belt for her acting career, which that's embarrassing. So I'm glad people are calling her out for this. But at the same time, it's like, okay, if you're bad-mouthing people, what are you saying behind closed doors? What are you saying to your husband? And finally for today, another insider source claimed they've known Ben for more than 10 years and everything is a fight for him and Jen. The only satisfaction he gets in life is overcoming when the odds are stacked against him. Now that they're reunited, the ego battle between Ben and Jennifer was always on full display and is only really eclipsed by the obvious passion and respect they have for one another. But like, there has to be an easier path and you have to ask why they want their marriage to be this way in the first place. Like, I'm guessing for publicity? And in Jen's case, to promote her like new work based on their love story. But I have a feeling the moment this whole tour cycle ends, so will the marriage, publicly, because it ain't looking great.